Hi guys, so today I want to do another talk through video. Uh, I have a couple topics on my mind. I probably should do a motorcycle one sometime soon because I've had one for so long and I don't think I've ever done an entire video talking through my experience with it, how I got started, and just everything in between, all my thoughts on it. But anyways, this video is not about that. I have decided I want to do a video actually talking about Rye Life. So this is going to be a video kind of about like dog ownership, what my lifestyle is like with her, how we have transitioned over the years. There are some aspects of her breed that a lot of people tend to fixate on, but I just personally believe that every dog is different. There are so many different personalities, even if the dogs are the same breed. So I would rather focus on the individual dog rather than their breed. So anyways, let's start from the very beginning. I have actually really liked Huskies for a while. I'm not sure where that stemmed from, but I do remember when I was younger, I would watch movies like Balto, and I would really like the way that Jenna looked. Jenna was a beautiful dog in that movie. And um, I think I just kind of admired their beauty. Their, they look majestic to me. I really like the way that their body looks and um, they're just really, really beautiful dogs. So I've liked them for a while and I have always wanted a dog since I was a kid, but um, my parents were definitely not going to let me do that. And I feel like all of our Chinese family friends, none of them really own dogs. So I was not around dogs very much growing up. Our neighbor across the street, they got a lab puppy and that was like my minimal experience around dogs. I think uh, one of our neighbors was also a piano teacher and I had a couple lessons with her. She had a Cocker Spaniel. Yeah, just minimal exposure to dogs. And throughout my teenage years, I have pretty much been consistent about liking the breed. Um, one of my first boyfriends online was somebody that I met on World of Warcraft. And I think I talked to him a lot about my love of Huskies. And I do believe that I influenced him in getting one because we were online dating. Um, so when he came to visit me, he actually brought his Husky. His Husky is white and his name is Tofu. So I remember when I was, let me think, I think I was 21 or 22 and I was dating my uh, first boyfriend out of college. I also met him on World of Warcraft and I brought up wanting a Husky and he actually discouraged me from getting one at that moment because I wasn't ready. I wasn't really living in the right place for that. Um, finding somewhere in New Jersey where they allowed pets, especially a Siberian Husky was difficult because people view Siberian Huskies in the big dog category and they also have these um, preconceptions about like, oh, you can't own a Husky in an apartment. They need the space, all this other garbage. I'll talk about that stuff later. I think it was good that he actually discouraged me because I definitely wasn't ready at that time to have a dog. So let's fast forward, I guess, two years. And I was randomly browsing, what do you call it? Pet finder. And I came across this Husky that I really liked the appearance of and I actually contacted to see if it was still available for adoption. Turns out it wasn't. And the funny thing is, now that I look back on that picture, I'm like, wow, Riley looks so much better than that dog. But anyways, that pretty much started the chain of events for me being like, okay, now is the time. I wanted to see if there were adult dogs available for adoption. But after being told by so many of these breeders that they are not willing to adopt out to a home with a cat because of the prey drive, I decided to do a puppy. So I ended up getting Riley from a breeder in um, Somerset, Pennsylvania called Laura Dale's Siberians. And I put in a deposit. I was on the wait list. I think I was on the wait list for, let's say, six months or so. And then um, early January of 2016, she reached out to me saying that um, she originally kept Riley from a previous litter because she wanted to raise her and use her as a show dog. But since she was pregnant at the time and maybe her husband was having some medical complications, she realized she didn't have the time to train her. So she offered me Riley. 
So I thought that that was actually a unique experience because instead of selecting Riley from a litter with pictures of all the puppies and everything, she simply sent me one picture of Riley and I was just so excited that I was going to get a dog or just being offered a dog sooner than anticipated because originally my plan was to be part of the March litter. So when she reached out to me sooner, I was just like, holy shit, yes. And I also really did like the picture of Riley. I thought she was so freaking adorable. She had a like, I actually did think that at the time when I saw the picture of her, I was like, wow, she has a really interesting triangle face. Like it felt very equilateral. I don't even know, but it was really cute. So the thing is though, I wasn't really in a living situation that allowed for a dog yet because um, at that moment when she told me about that situation, I believe my dad had already purchased a condo for me to live in and raise Riley because before this whole process, I wanted to find a place to live that allowed a dog, right? And the places I was visiting weren't really the greatest and my parents came to visit with me and they didn't like the options either. So my dad, crazy really, I'm still so surprised that he did this for me. Um, yeah, he bought a condo and then he was just like, here, live in it and you can have Riley live there with you. Our move-in date was in March. Yeah, in March. And um, I asked the breeder, I was like, absolutely, I want this dog, but is it okay if you hold her for a couple months for me until I move in? And she was just like, oh yeah, that's totally fine. So me and my dad, my dad was so kind. He drove me to Somerset, Pennsylvania, which is five hours one way. And he drove the whole time, no breaks. I don't know how he does that, but actually whenever me and our family went on road trips uh, or when, whenever we traveled really, my dad did all the driving, my mom never drove. So I was in the back seat. Um, I was so surprised my dad offered because he had just purchased a new BMW 535i and um, I was like, uh, I really don't want my puppy to, you know, ruin your car, your new car, but he, he was smart. He brought like, you know, old clothing, paper towels and whatever, not, not paper towels, <laughs> towels. And uh, we just draped it all in the back. So I brought a crate and um, you know, it's crazy. When I went to pick her up, I remember thinking that she looked big. Um, but that's also because by the time I went to pick her up, she was already three months old. I don't wanna, I don't think this video is gonna be so much about just like my overall experience with her, like every little detail, especially like the beginning stages. But anyways, I will just say that I started thinking about this topic because um, I have thought more recently just about how having her has influenced me. So I had a couple topics that I wanted to discuss I'll try to be as complete about each of these topics though. So the first topic is diet. When I first picked her up and brought her home, the breeder was feeding her kibble and she had a specific brand of kibble that she told me to keep feeding her on. So I got it and I was giving it to her. But the problem is she didn't seem that interested in the food. She never finished a bowl of kibble at all and she just like when I offered it to her, her motivation was just very low. So I had her for one year in New Jersey and then I moved here to San Diego. And the moment I got here, I started feeding her a raw diet. So the first attempt that I did was I went to a local store here. There's a pet store here called Dexter's Deli and they have their own raw meat line. So I would get her beef and I would get her chicken. Um, and she, she loved it. She always showed so much excitement for it and she usually pretty much ate all of it. However, on beef, she didn't always eat everything. But anyways, I fed that to her for a couple of months and then I decided I am sick and tired of driving to the store to pick up her food because it's just, it's heavy if I buy a large amount. And also the workers there, I did not enjoy even interacting with them just to buy the food. They just did not show friendliness at all. So I was like, why am I giving you my money? Let me order some food online. So I started ordering food from rawpawspetfood.com and they pretty much offer you free shipping if you um, order over $200 for frozen food. So I started buying off of that and I would get a mix of chicken, chicken and vegetables, 
and I would always order like a bulk amount. I ordered about 40 pounds every time, which was about $220 and fed that to her for many years. Um, it wasn't until recently that I started to make my own food. And the reason for that is because my brother started doing that for his cats. And I started thinking about, okay, maybe I should start doing that with my cats too, because it is better for them. I personally believe so. I also figured that if I make my own food, it will be cheaper for sure. So I bought a meat grinder and lately I have been buying chicken breast from the store and then buying some beef liver from online, grinding those together. And then I also bought some calcium powder that I put on top of the food before I serve it to them. And that is what she has been eating for the past, I feel like it's almost been a year now. It's been 10 months-ish. And um, of course her enthusiasm for the food has been great. And you know, I just feel like she looks healthy. For a while I did feed her too much. I was feeding her one pound a day and she was looking chunky. But now I've been feeding her 0.8 pounds a day and I feel like she's um, really good weight wise. All right, so exercise. Exercise is something that a lot of people worry about when it comes to medium sized dogs, especially a Siberian Husky. A lot of things online go really overboard, I'd say with Huskies. Um, and it's mainly because a lot of the owners that get Huskies are not fit to own Huskies. And they just end up with a dog that's very strong willed. Some of them are stubborn, but but you get stubborn dogs for any breed. So let me just talk about specifically with her. For her, I've had, I guess, yeah, like my exercise with her has been very different. It's not always been consistent throughout the years. Okay, so for Huskies, they always say that you need to like walk them for miles every day or you have to make sure they really tire out. They're a very energetic, active dog. You need to give them this, this, and that. And yes, that's very true. I would say my approach to that has never been rigid. So the thing is, I truly believe that I have always focused first on making sure that she was well-trained, that she is well-mannered, and that she just is a generally calm dog. So once you have that, you don't have to worry so much about a dog being destructive or things like that because when I leave the house, I don't let her free roam around my house. I don't give her opportunities to destroy things, but also she has never really showed that much interest in stuff like that. Even when she was a puppy, she didn't go around attacking my shoes. She didn't bite my socks. She didn't bite my furniture, but also I didn't leave her off leash around the house. I always kind of like as when she was a puppy, when she was very young, I kept her on the leash around me and then just like made sure she was always in my line of sight. That way she wouldn't be getting into things because there's a million things around her she does not understand and I need to be there to guide her. For the most part, current day, I try to make sure that I get her some fetch sessions in every day because that is her favorite form of play and I am honestly so glad that she likes that play because I find that so fun myself. And I just love watching her sprint for the ball. I love her enthusiasm for it. And it's just really great exercise. She gets tired out like entirely from it within, I don't know, 15 minutes. If we're at the park and I get to throw it as far as I want, she gets really tired, really tired by then. But um, fetch has not always been something that I've been fortunate enough to play with her uh, easily. In New Jersey, I had this park that was like five minutes from my condo and I would take her there and off leash fetch with her all the time and it was great. And then since I moved to San Diego, that became more difficult because there are more people here. And then you have rangers everywhere that are like, oh, your dog is off leash. Even though every single time you go to these parks, there are people off leashing their dogs. So. There would be times where I would be like on my own little side of the field at the park and I would do that because I want to be in our own area. I'm not trying to bother other people and I would be there playing fetch and some fucking ranger would drive up on the grass in their truck to scold me for playing fetch with her. So that really discouraged me from playing fetch with her because I, I felt like I couldn't find anywhere where I could just go and enjoy a quick little session with her without being disturbed or being scolded. 
So that did piss me off for many years, actually, because I was like, man, I want to just be able to play this activity with you, but I feel like I can't in this fucking city or state. Um, but now I have been fortunate enough to find this house where I do have a bit more space in my backyard and I bought some turf so she can run on top of the rocks without hurting her feet and we play fetch out on the side. Um, also lately I have been taking her to this park in Santee where it's, it seems like nobody really monitors the park. So every time I go there and if I see that there's nobody else there, I will have her fetch on the grass, which I still feel is so much better because it must be so much nicer for her to just like sprint. It's just open. She can go as far as she wants and it's just so much nicer. So that is definitely my ultimate goal is to have a house and have a really big yard where I can hopefully chuck the ball as far as I want and she can run to her heart's content. But aside from fetch, I do structured walks with her and that is something that's pretty important to me. I don't want to become that person that relies on fetch all the time for her exercise that I never do walks with her. And I also do believe that structured walks are very important to share with her because I don't want her to lose that skill. So if I moved to like Montana and I had acres of land and I just let her run around on that piece of land and never walked her, then she would forget how to do a structured walk because we're not practicing it. And that's not something I want her to forget. So I do structured walks with her, I'd say probably at least once a day. And I have been greatly enjoying those walks for myself as well because I, that is something that I have definitely realized. I feel like having a dog has encouraged me to get up more often. So for my type of lifestyle, if I did not have her, I would be sitting on my ass in front of the computer all day. I would be sitting on the couch all day and I don't even know what would encourage me to do things like go for walks if I didn't have a dog. Nowadays, I have greatly appreciated walks even more than even just a couple years ago while I still had her because now sometimes I go for walks for myself. I drive to somewhere nice that I enjoy and I walk by myself and I want to try to walk for like at least two hours and really enjoy it. That definitely gets me thinking. I feel like having a dog, especially a medium sized dog, they encourage a nice healthy lifestyle where you get up, you bring them out. And I feel like she has encouraged me to explore more too, because I like to find new neighborhoods, new locations to walk with her that I enjoy. Um, and that's been pretty important to me because I have realized that around the city, I don't enjoy my walks. Um, in my current neighborhood, I don't like walking her around here. I have significantly reduced the frequency of walking her around here. Every time I tend to walk her, I drive somewhere else. So I would say that yes, um, of course, I'm not saying that you don't want to exercise a Siberian Husky whatsoever, but I don't believe in garbage like Huskies can't live in apartments, Huskies need acres of land to be happy because I have received a comment like that before from an idiot that was saying how like, their husky had acres of land and that still wasn't enough exercise for them. Don't believe people like that because clearly they don't really care about their dog's mental well-being if they think that all a dog needs is space and not actual training or mental stimulation. I feel like exercise is a pretty large topic so I got kind of stuck rambling about fetch. Another thing that I do really love about having a medium sized dog, especially a breed like a Husky, is that I have been able to do a lot of different activities with her. So we hike a lot or not as much now than before, but I do love to hike with her and um, having her trained for off leash has been so important for that because it is such a significant difference to me personally to hike with her off leash compared to having her like next to me. I feel like when I'm out in the wilderness like that, I would rather have my own little personal bubble and not have her like nearby me all the time. Plus if she wasn't trained, then she would kind of be pulling on the leash and then it would just be, I feel like a little bit, a little bit extra stressed, like worrying about her and just worrying about possible prey drive and all that other stuff. 
but um, hiking has been something that we've been sharing together for a while. I started taking her hiking um, ever since she was probably like six months old. Um, lately, I have also biked around with her occasionally. So that is also something that I've realized I definitely prefer having her off leash because then it's better for her because then she can space herself um, from my bike comfortably and not have like a random leash occasionally pull her if I end up going too fast. But of course, when she is leashed the few times that we bike, um, I try to make sure that I keep pace with her. And if she's starting to look tired, I will make sure that I slow down. Like I don't try to pull her. That's not really fair. That's not nice. And uh, it's supposed to be an activity that she enjoys. So yeah, I don't do it too often with her because it is really tiring for her. I just like that if I want to come up with some sort of active idea, usually she can participate with me and I really, really enjoy that. Okay, so this next one is about medical bills and vet appointments, although I guess it's more so medical bills. Um, so I would say for the entire time that I have had her, we have had one major instance and that's it. Aside from that, she has not had any health problems, which I'm really grateful for. So the one instance, uh, I think it happened three years ago. So I did make a video on that and I was very upset, of course. We were out hiking and I was an idiot. I still feel so stupid about it. Something that I like to play with her is hide and seek. So we were on the trail and I randomly decided to play hide and seek with her in an unknown area. Never do that. So I basically had her stay somewhere and then I went to hide behind a tree. And while I went to go find a place to hide, I saw a fence with barbed wire on it that was like leaning on the side. So it wasn't fully up, it was kind of like this. And I saw it and I went to hide and I don't know why it didn't cross my mind that she could hurt herself running through that to find me. And that's exactly what happened. She ran through it and it was such a, an awful moment. Actually, I really don't, I, I'll try not to talk about this too much because it might upset me. I was behind the tree and after I said break, I had that thought in my mind, what if she runs through the fence? And then I heard her yelp and then I knew that it happened. I was on a trail and we were 45 minutes one way uh, from my car. So that was not really an option. I lucked out somehow because the local high school, their cross country team was training and they were running on the trail. So a bunch of people came by and I asked them for help. So one of the teachers, um, she ran back to the school, got in her car, and we were also lucky that I was right next to the road. This trail ends up going near the road for a while. So she drove on the road trying to look for me. I had to carry Riley from the trail to the road. And I was also very lucky in the sense that the cut didn't go too deep. I did see some bone, but it wasn't like blood wasn't spurting everywhere. Yeah, she was really, really good about it too. She was crying for a while. So right after the cut happened, she was like wailing and that made me kind of, uh, what, uh, what's the word? Like I basically panicked so hard because first off, I never hear that sound coming from her. So I was like, holy shit, this must be really bad. And I didn't know how to handle it because I was so far from civilization. I was like one hour away from the city hiking. And um, anyways, I was able to get her to a, an emergency hospital due to the help of this wonderful teacher who was so kind. I was so amazed at her kindness for going out of her way to help me. But we got there. Uh, I have to double check how much the surgery costed. It was also at a convenient time because I had just received my bonus from work. So that was the way I was able to pay for it. Otherwise, I don't feel like I would be able to handle an unexpected large expense like that. But that was the only time something like that has ever happened. Um, her dental health has always been 
Well, I won't say that I've always been the best at taking care of her dental health. I don't actually brush her teeth. I use greenies. And with a raw diet, and I do give her raw meaty bones once in a while, I feel like her teeth have been pretty good. Um, whenever I've brought her to the vet, they have never really said that it's in bad shape or that it's on the way to uh, becoming a problem on a monthly basis. Although I do get lazy about how rigid I am about it, I usually have her on flea and tick medication and then heartworm. I use Semperica and Interceptor Plus. Those are the ones that the vet locally recommends. I don't bring her to the vet very often. I try to avoid it actually. I bring her once a year if I need subscription refillings and maybe for a checkup. But I have not found a vet that I particularly like. Most of the places that are around cater to the average pet owner and I don't really like that. That means they do stuff like excite your dog, um, baby talk to your dog. And I know that people can be different about those things, right? It's just a personal preference of mine. I don't like when people baby talk to her because I don't baby talk to my pets. Not so much. I might like raise my voice a little bit, but I don't do I don't do that shit. So I do usually request for them not to do that because it's important to me that when she's in a new environment like that, I don't want to encourage her to be excited because that is not a state of mind that I want her to be expecting and to uh, have it be encouraged to the point where her energy levels might be very high. At a place like the vet, I would like it for her to just be calm. That is actually the best state of mind for her to receive any sort of treatment as well. For the most part, um, there have been some doctors that are calm when they enter, which is good and I like that, but they have always, the ones here in San Diego, they have always discouraged a raw diet. Yeah, I would say like upkeep for stuff like medical stuff generally isn't too much. The medication that I do feed her every month I think it's like, I think they're similar prices and I haven't been ultra consistent with it to the point where like I'm always giving her one every month and always making sure that I buy it throughout the year. <laughs> Maybe that's not really good information for you guys, but that's just the way that I have approached things and that's kind of like what the cost upkeep for her is. Just in general, medically, she has been pretty great. I don't have many issues with her. Usually when I do bring her for stuff that I'm unsure about, there's usually an explanation for it. So for example, one time I brought her in because she was having diarrhea and she was um, being very strange with her bowel movements. And that was because I was being an idiot. Um, I was letting her raw meat defrost on the kitchen counter for 30 minutes. So sometimes if I wasn't very good about letting them defrost in the fridge, like I didn't take it out early enough for it to be soft by the time I wanted to feed it to her, I would put it on the kitchen counter and let it defrost and that's very bad. So if you leave raw meat on the kitchen counter for that long, bacteria will form and it's just, that's just not the type of thing you want to do. So I was doing that not all the time, but I did, make that connection somehow and then basically after i stopped doing that it just stopped happening another thing that i do notice on her from time to time that i'm not a big fan of but they usually go away on their own she gets little sores around her snout and her mouth so usually they're under her lip like over here sometimes they're around her nose or along her upper lip and there was one time where it got really gross and ugly. Um, I have some pictures that I took of them, but I remember taking her to the vet and they offered nothing useful. So that was a waste of a trip. And I don't think they really gave me anything to put on her. They were going to offer me wipes, I think. And I think these were wipes that they offered similar to my cat's feline acne under their chin. I feel like it's literally just antibacterial wet wipes that they were giving me and they usually charge you a ridiculous fee, so I declined those. But yes, overall, aside from what I have mentioned, she has been really, really good when it comes to medical stuff and not needing a lot of care. 
All right, so the next one is traveling. Ever since I've gotten Riley and ever since I decided to train her the way that I have trained her, I have been very, very hardcore about not letting her be watched by someone I don't trust and by someone who does not understand or follow her training. So that basically means that nobody ever watches her unless I know that they are familiar with the training methodology and that they know how to implement it. If I were to leave, if I were to fly out of the country, I would only feel good about doing that if the person that was watching her generally knew how to use the e-collar, would enforce all of the structure that I do, and that stuff is extremely important to me. I just don't want her to develop bad habits while I'm gone because I guess, yes, there's a possibility that once I come back, she won't do them anymore because she knows what I'm like. She knows I don't let her get away with things and I would not be cool with her doing some new bad habit that she inherited because whoever was watching her was very lax about things and didn't do things the way that I normally would. I've only traveled a few times and for the most part, I have brought her with me. I traveled to the International in 2018 and that was in Vancouver, Canada. And I flew with her in the cabin. I stayed there for a week at a, I think it's, I mean, it's an apartment condo thing that was nearby the stadium. So um, I brought a foldable crate and she seemed like she did pretty good the whole week there. And I, I did really enjoy having her there with me because um, for that type of tournament, they have a best of three game. And after that, they have a break. And I don't want to just hang around the arena the whole time. So I would walk back. I made sure that I booked an Airbnb very close to the stadium. It was like two blocks away. I walked back and then I would spend time with her and then I would go back. It was just, I don't know. It was a nice break and I really liked having her presence there with me because she is pretty much the one living thing that I spend the most time with in my adult life and I really, really enjoy her company. I have pretty much limited my travel to within the country. So that's also why we have been doing road trips around the West Coast area because I want to take her with me. So we have gone to New Mexico, Utah, um, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, and also like San Jose, San Luis Obispo. I would love to go with her to Alaska. That one is something I have to figure out because that one I might have to fly because it is 60 hours of driving and I don't really think that's something that I'm willing to do. For the most part, I don't want to fly out of the country because I don't have someone that I trust to watch her. I did a dog training seminar that I was attending and it was an all day thing, uh, including driving. It would have been like 10 hours or so. So I didn't want her in the crate like that all day. So I asked while Jose was still living here, I asked him to check in on her just like once in the middle of the day. And I do for the most part trust him with it because he um, got a lot of help from me in training his Huskies. And uh, he also understands the training early on when I was starting my business, he helped me out a lot. So he saw a lot of the training and um, he pretty much does understand it. He has also seen me do the structure with her all the time, so he knows what we do. So I was comfortable with that. And I guess lastly, the one thing that um, I haven't put as much thought into until recently as well, is that she really has been a, a really great companion for me. And it always makes me wonder if I would be the way that I am now with not needing much social interaction because of her. So I got her in 2016, so that makes me um, 25. Although up until that age, I was still pretty much had no friends and spending a lot of time by myself. So I do still feel like I have that natural trait in myself. Um, of course, her company since after that point on has been really, really positive. I do 
find myself feeling things that I wouldn't have experienced without her. So definitely I have those moments of, I can only describe it like it's just love. Um, I have my moments where she's just lying here on the couch sleeping and maybe I'm sitting over there on the computer and then I always just look at her and then I admire her and then I'm just like, oh my God, I love you so much. Um, sometimes in the car I do that too where we're just driving somewhere and I look behind and I'm looking at her being calm and being quiet and being so well behaved and I'm just feeling so much love towards her and really appreciating her company and her presence because that's what I find so interesting about dogs sometimes they're always down to do something so they are they're such great companions in that sense where when it's time for a walk, they're just like, all right, we're going to walk now. Okay, you're taking me. We're going on a hike now. Okay, we're going to be going on a bike right now. It's just like whatever um, we decide to do, they're down to do it. And there are just so, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would be very good at describing it, but um, having her companionship has been really incredible these past few years. I do see myself always having a dog. So I know it's kind of morbid to talk about death and everything. I don't think it's a topic I want to avoid either. So obviously I don't like to talk about her dying because there have been times recently where I've had that thought of just like, oh my goodness, when she dies and if I get another dog and have to train it over again, they're not gonna do things like she did. So one of the things that I somehow trained her to do that I really really like is at least when it comes to this house I just find stuff that are really convenient so when we're gonna go to bed I always let her out back right so the really nice thing now is that I have a yard it's fenced in so I feel confident letting her off leash back there although truthfully even in the front of the house I feel like I would trust her I just feel like we're so in sync now that I feel confident off-leashing her without an e-collar, although of course in areas like hiking, I would not take that risk. It's just not worth it. But anyways, back here, I let her out to pee. She goes out to pee and then she comes back to the door and then she stares at the door waiting. And if I'm not there right away, um, she just stays there. And then I tell her, go poop. Then she goes out to go poop and then she comes right back. Like what I love about this routine is that she knows that going to the bathroom or taking a shit is business only. It's not pleasure. I don't really prefer for her to be out there sniffing for 10 minutes. Once she's done pooping, she's at the door and she's waiting to be let in. And I really, really like that. So there's small little traits that she has like that, that I don't even know how I taught her to do these things, but I really, really like it. So the thought of needing in the future if I get another dog or when I get another dog having to reteach all these things over again I mean I guess it could be exciting because it's another dog with a different personality but she is my first I I like so much about her her personality is incredible oh god let's not talk about this I'm just getting sad thinking about when she's gone I, I just really do think that my ability to be independent and not needing the company from somebody else as much has been so great because um, she encourages an active lifestyle from me and I do also think her companionship has encouraged me to be um, adventurous exploring places so because I want to take her hiking with me it encourages me to look up different hikes drive out further so we could go be in the countryside or all these different types of things I just really feel like owning her has been really positive growth for me too. It has taught me to be patient. I used to be so angry over trying to raise her when she was a puppy. And those were things that I was really, really down on myself about. I was so disappointed in who I was. I felt kind of disgusted with myself. And even though I know I still have much more to go because my anger is not completely, completely gone, there are still occasional moments where I um, let it get the best of me, but it's significantly less than before, so that's still an improvement. 
I'm so happy that I made that choice to get her. She has been so good with everything. Puppers, Riley, but I'm talking about you. You're a cute one. <laughs> I love looking at her face. You have to, she's such a beautiful girl. And you're a funny one. I guess let me just try to really quickly close this out with what I love so much about her. Um, I, I love, let's start basic. I love that she likes to play fetch. I really like the way she plays where she's hunchbacking because I think that's, it's so funny. I've never seen a dog play that way. It looks really goofy. It's so silly. She has been doing it since she was a puppy and I do have a video of her doing it as a puppy and it was so funny to me then and it's still so funny to see her do it now. Obviously, I, I love how she looks. Um, I know I'm biased, but I don't feel like I've seen many other Huskies that look beautiful like her. Like she, that's why I love to look at her too. I just I always admire her. I'm just like, wow, her face is gorgeous. And then I also really like her markings. I like her facial markings a lot. Um, sometimes Huskies have like markings that go around their eyes. Not a big fan of that. But also she has a bit of like, what's the word? It's like a very, very, very subtle light red that's kind of like mixed in her fur. She has a little bit at the back of her head near her ears. And then um, she has a little bit throughout her back, just a little bit. Um, I really like her size actually. So she's on the smaller end and a lot of people still think she's a puppy when they see her out in public. She's about 45 pounds. So her size has made it very easy to, like when I flew on the plane with her, she's able to fit underneath very easily. She's just in a down the whole time and there's no problem with that. The interesting thing about her is that she's not like a typical Husky, typical. Um, she's not stubborn at all she's uh she definitely wants to please you but she also has a very timid personality so she can get nervous easily um something that she tends to do is nervous looking that was something that i had no idea about and then she started doing it and then i looked into it and i was like oh this is what you're doing she's definitely a very excited dog so that part I find interesting because a lot of my training is basically about trying to maintain that. So excitement is not a bad thing when it's appropriate. So when she's playing, I just let her go all out. That's all fine and everything. When it comes to people coming over, I would prefer for her to keep a cap on it depending on like what's going on. So when someone first arrives, she needs to maintain her excitement and I don't let her greet somebody right away. Um, I want the person to be here for a couple of minutes. That way she's used to their presence. She knows that just because somebody comes over does not mean she gets to greet them right away. And then she just kind of manages her energy. And then when she is able to greet them, sometimes she's still like really excited. But the way she is is very surprising to me because I don't often see other dogs that show this level of excitement. Like sometimes her whole body is just like shaking. She can't contain herself. This is definitely um, a really nice reminiscing moment <laughs> when it comes to this video because it does make me really appreciate um, her entire being. And it's funny because I have never ever considered getting a second dog at the same time as having her. It's still something that I don't think I would ever want. I don't think I would enjoy having two dogs at the same time. I mean, yes, there's times where I'm watching someone's dog. Like sometimes I was watching Shane's dog and Shane did a really good job at setting up the foundation for his dog. So when I was watching him, it wasn't difficult at all. It just felt so different managing two dogs. I took them out for an off-leash hike at Mount Laguna. And I thought that was pretty cool. It just feels really cool to have more than one dog and to know that you have off-leash control over them. So um, there are times where I think it's cool, but I still feel like it's more than I would prefer to manage. And for the most part, I really like to have one-on-one -on -one focus for stuff like this because even the thought of taking one of my cats out with us to the park or something when I used to do it at New Jersey, 
it just felt like more than I wanted to manage. I would rather put all my focus on her and it can just be the two of us instead of just one more dog, which is more money, more time and starting doing training. And yeah, it's just more of everything. And she pretty much satisfies everything that I need in a dog. I feel like when she passes, I'll probably take a little time off from having a dog and maybe take that time to travel since it will be restricting once you have a dog again. But um, yeah, I, I, wow, what a journey it has been so far. And uh, I can't wait to spend more time with her. Um, every day, I always look forward to just doing simple things with her, having her be there with me on these simple walks and just sharing that time together. Yeah, hopefully that was a fairly complete discussion about my experience with dog ownership with her. Yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.